<coughs> it's straight to the desert. <coughs> and it is one hot day today. It's interesting is that in doing these devotionals, <coughs> I remember thinking that, well, I'm either going to have to record these at night or I'm going to have to record these in, in uh, inside or, you know, share someplace else rather than direct, bright sunlight. <laughs> Part of the reason is because I had too much exposure at one time and <coughs> because of that I have to be careful of my <coughs> skin exposure because of the damaging rays from the sun because of skin cancer, which we all need to be aware of that. Sometimes when you overdo something, you wind up being susceptible then from that moment on because you damage the natural resistance of the body. In streams in the desert, thine ears shall hear word behind thee saying, this is the way, walk ye in it, when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left. When you're in doubt or difficulty, when many voices urge this course or the other, when prudence utters one advice and faith claims another, then let us be still, hushing each intruder, calming ourselves in the sacred hush of God's presence. Let us study his word in the attitude of devout attention. Let us lift up our nature into the pure light of his face, eager only to know what God, the Lord, shall determine. And before too long, a very distinct impression will be made, an unmistakable foretelling of his secret counsel. It is not wise in the early stages of Christian life to depend on this alone, but to wait for the corroboration of circumstances. But those who have had dealings with God know well the value of secret fellowship with him to ascertain his will. Are you in difficulty about your way? Go to God with your question. Get direction from the light of his smile or the cloud of his refusal. If you only get alone where the light and the shadows of earth cannot interfere, where human opinions fail to reach, and if you will dare to wait there silent and expectant, though all around you insist on immediate decision or action, the will of God will be made clear. And not only that, you will have a new conception of God, a deeper insight into his nature and heart of love which shall be for you and you yourself alone, a rapturous experience to abide your precious prerequisite forever, a rich guerdon of those long waiting hours. You know, one of the things that I learned from, you know, seeking to understand how to hear God's voice and to walk with him was, you know, I was always told that you had to be careful and to be worried and to be, you know, mindful of the idea that you know you have to you know only look in scripture and that only the bible you know and only this and only that and that god couldn't use anything else and you know the nice thing about that was that as a young person when i read it i was able to see that okay in the scripture <laughs> it showed me that god spoke always you know to people that on a consistent basis he seemed to have this dialogue you know that the more I read it, the more I saw that God used circumstances, true. God used special messengers, and that was true. But God also spoke direct to the person. And that made me think, well, what changed? And when I read the words of Jesus, and I realized that Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice and they know me, and they wouldn't follow the voice of another, I took it to mean that that's what it meant. <laughs> it meant we could hear God speak. So. In a lot of ways, people can deceive themselves in some respect in, in the sense that baby Christians, sometimes when they first get saved, are so excited, they get into everything. You know, just like a little kid would get into, you know, if you didn't lock the cabinets and you didn't, you know, put things up and you weren't careful, then children crawling around on the floor would get into all kinds of things, We'd like sharp instruments or poisons or things that might have been left around that you didn't realize were there. Well, God has given us, you know, his word, and that as we become more familiar with it, then we're able to use it properly in its proper perspective, that we read it in context, God's speaking to us, we understand what it means. The same thing is true about life, is that 
When we go about our day, opening it up every day, sitting down with devotionals, asking God, God, what do you want me to do today? If you don't know what to do, wait. Seriously, if you don't know what to do, wait. God will open the door. He will open the circumstance. He will speak specifically. He will arrange it in such a way that he is seeking to speak to you. He is wanting to have communion with you. He's wanting you to know him. So if he's God and you're not, and you're not trying to play God by making things fit, and you're not trying to work things out for your own benefit, then if you're just willing to sit still and wait on the Lord, I am sure today, even as Streams of the Desert said, and as God speaks through his word, and as God arranges us to use these devotionals to focus back in on him, I am sure, as he does with me every day, that he will point you in the right way that you should go. He does me. <laughs> I threw my back out. He's telling me, slow down, take it easy, relax. And I'm going, oh, but Lord, my back hurts. And it's very simple for me to say, oh, the circumstances caused me to not do what God would have me to do. But you know, you, God hasn't stopped me from doing the things that he's already told me to do. He just says, do it in a different way for me today. So for me, I've heard from him. I've listened. I've adjusted my day according to what he's told me to do. The question is, <laughs> and you know what's coming, have you? Talk to him, figure it out, you'll get there. You already know.